Okay, call the meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. Um, first order of business is the minutes. Uh, so, uh, do I ha have any corrections? Uh, Dean? Yeah, on, uh, under the education line, where we say the unexpected enrollment growth, so the enrollment growth was expected, it was just above what we thought it was going to be. It was greater than projected. Okay, which line are you on? It's under budget 20 education, go to line, counting that one, one, two, three, four. So it starts in the sentence before, it said resubmitting AHS to the MSBA for funding the unexpected enrollment growth. So it's, I mean, I think we should just strike the word unexpected and say enrollment growth above projection. Okay, got that, Peter? Will do. Thank you. Any others? Um, I, have, I actually have one more. Maybe we should. I, it's kind of an interesting one. Um, and maybe we just leave it. So we talk about, on the next slide, it says, the good news is that SPED is under budget and she hopes to transfer 200 to the under K into the SPED stabilization fund. Well, if you go through the book, SPED's actually over budget by 100 grand. And she saved about 300, 400 grand on utilities which is where she's getting the money from. They said that, but I said, I, I talked to her after the meeting, I said, well, you're, you're actually 100 grand over your budget, not, you're projecting to be over, so I don't, it, it's what she said, but it's probably not all that correct, because she did say later on in the meeting that the utilities is what drove the big savings in the budget. Okay, then the good news is that the budget, or uh, yeah, maybe elements we'll, of the budget? Or, yeah, maybe it's made it more general. Okay, so cross out SPED and say that, I'll call it elements, if you find a different word, Peter, that's fine. Yeah, elements is under of the budget is, uh, uh, is under budget. Yeah. Okay, any other corrections? I have a down under where it says SPED, uh, in about in the middle, um, and then two lines down, in response to questions about enrollment, Bodie and Johnson stated that there are also hard to predict size P changes. Something's wrong in that space. Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Class size changes? Size, size class changes. I'm sorry? Class size changes. Okay. So class, yes. yeah. size, cross out the P, changes. Oh, it might be percentages. Okay, are there any other changes? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor uh, of the minutes is corrected. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Done. Okay, conflict of interest. <coughs> I just received two more today. So the uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of the Finance Committee. But I won't name names, but you know who you are. Please get those in. Okay, now, uh, I believe that we can finish up tonight. Um, you know, we have things to do. I think only a couple of them will involve a lot of discussion. Most of them are fairly straightforward. Uh, so I'm gonna, if it looks like we're gonna finish, I might suspend the Mary Ronan rule, but I think we can finish. If we can finish tonight, now we still have April 13th. We still have the April 13th meeting to finish up uh, a few elements. We've got the collective bargaining on April 13th, or what this, whatever is up to that point. Uh, we've got the Human Rights Commission, Article 13. We have the Fiscal uh, st Stabilization Fund, and any fine tuning. So Monday, April 13th, uh, we will be meeting, but if we can finish up tonight, we'll have to meet on Monday. Now, uh, on Monday, Alan Jones will be sending out the budgets. Everybody should look at the budgets, especially your own. 
you know, look at the numbers under each person, you know, uh, look, look at everything and make sure it's right. The budgets are going to also go to the manager's office. So if there's anything wrong, we'll blame him. Uh, and then I'll also be sending out the finance committee report um, on Monday for you to review. Please look at everything. Please look at the comments uh, and uh, email me back any corrections. If you like to use a red pen like I do, you can just put it in the mail to my house um, on that. So the first thing we're going to be doing today is the Warren articles. Then we're going to go to solar. Then we're going to go to the final budgets um, so I can let the manager go home to his family. Uh, but he'll be here for most of the time anyway. Okay, so the first budget uh, article remaining is Article 25, which is the rescission of borrowing authorizations. I sent that out uh, last week, I think. Uh, and uh, Charlie, if you want to yes. maybe go through the big ones or. Uh, well, I'll just, uh, <coughs> I think the, the there's uh, about 15 items here. The total is $4,338,547. The big change from the first draft you saw this um, the night of the Capital uh, Committee presentation is that the um, Thompson School, the, the unused uh, debt in the Thompson School has not has been taken out of this because the Thompson School project is not officially closed yet. So the Treasurer will, will come back to us probably at the next annual town meeting to close out the rest of the um, Thompson School. <coughs> These numbers have been vetted by the Treasurer, the Deputy uh, Treasurer, uh, the Deputy Town Manager, Ruth Lewis, the Comptroller, and since a lot of them are public works, uh, also by Michael Radebaker. So this, this, this is unissued uh, debt that was authorized by town meeting that's no longer needed for various purposes. And um, the largest is um, some funds left in the urban renewal project uh, unused debt in the urban renewal project, which was the Sims project in 2002. And the smallest is uh, $530 entitled various. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I move that we uh, support the town treasurer's request on this article to rescind $4,338,547 of authorized but unissued debt. Second. Okay, are there any questions? Could you repeat that number slowly? Yes. Four million three hundred and thirty eight thousand five hundred and forty seven dollars. And this was sent out uh, by Alan twice actually. Yeah. And you have it in your email. Okay, and this is a good thing to get this debt off our books. Yeah, it helps the borrowing. I mean it, it, we have a, a finite amount of debt capacity. Of course we're not near it. We don't we don't borrow that much money, but, okay. but it helps. Is there any questions for discussion? Okay, all those in favor of uh, proposal as recommended by Charlie of Article 25, rescinding the borrowing, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> uh, okay, favorable action, unanimous. Thank you. Okay, Article 26 is sewer. Grant? Um. Adam was going to speak to this as well, but uh, Article 26 is for the financing of the sewer work. Um, it's a million dollars. The actual total amount of the um, sewer work is 1.1, 100,000 is going to come from cash, and the article is for the borrowed amount. The sewer. Um, MWRA gives a better a sewer improvement incentive to give you 25% grant and a 75% loan. So the 25% is basically given money. Um, that's a pretty good thing. So we want to take advantage of that uh, that program. Okay, so one million is appropriated and the million to be borrowed. Okay, for new people, this is when the NWRA overcharges us and then loans it back to us for free. Uh, but if we don't take it, somebody else will. So, uh, Is there any questions or discussion? Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, moved and seconded under Article 26. 
All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Okay, 20, uh, 27, water. Uh, this amount is 900,000. Uh, and again, it's uh, for financing, but this one is the water main work. Uh, the only difference with same sort of situation, it's a million dollars in cash. I mean, a million dollars for the water work uh, improvement, but 100,000 is gonna come from cash. Uh, this one is a 100% interest-free loan, like uh, Alan had paraphrased. But um, there is no grant money with the uh, water. And uh, I recommend that uh, we approve this. Okay, is there any questions? So Dick? A million or 900,000? 900,000 is the amount yeah. of the art. And one million is the amount of the work that's going to be done. They're going to lose 100,000 in cash. So the article is 900,000. Yeah. Okay, is there any questions or discussion? Do I have a motion? So moved, second. Second, okay. Moved and seconded for favorable action. Is there any further discussion under Article 27 for the borrowing for water? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, favorable action. Minuteman. Um, apparently, there was a slight adjustment after Minuteman met with us. Um, we voted 4,010,463, and apparently the last three digits should be 950. So basically, we're increasing uh, the assessment by about $500, a little short of $500. Um, so again, the new number would be 4,010,950. Um, no, I'll stop it. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, is there any uh, discussion? Any Do you know if that reflects the new Chapter 70 numbers? Uh, to come after that, the number to come after that? Or? You know, I'm not sure. That, that is what prompted the change. When the governor's budget came out, so our assessment went up, not down. Our assessment went up, not down. I find that's more than well, it might have been also, uh, you know, the other line item, trans school transportation, or yeah, or yes. something like that, that caused the uh, right. caused the adjustment. Dean, are we voting the article again? Or are we just voting the administrative change? Well, actually, uh, uh, we need a motion to reconsider. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of reconsidering? Can we say aye? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, so the new amount will be 4,010,950. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Favorable no. action unanimous? No, 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 no. I voted against it the last time. I can't vote for it now. Same here. Ah, okay. Not Not unanimous. Assistance. That's why I asked if it was just administrative adjustment. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, I took that out of order, Article 28. Okay, all those in favor of the 4,010,463, please raise your hand. 950. Uh, please raise your hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Opposed? One, two, three. It's always been your favorite school, John. Okay, so. Actually, I think it's a great school. Too bad with the bleak schedule that we do. Okay, 14 to 3. Okay. Article 32, Appropriation Public Art East Arlington. I think there's a handout. So with that, I'll turn that over to the town manager. All right, thank you. Should I uh, put the microphone in place in mind? Oh, I, I think either way it's probably going to capture. Uh, 
Thank you very much. So this article, um, uh, this article is filed uh, at the request of the town manager and myself after a, a really a number of meetings with Arlington Public Park, which is a subsidiary group of the Vision 2020 Culture and Recreation Task Force. Uh, they've been involved with a number of public art projects in town, the Cheerful Where You Sit project that's happened uh, in the center and along the bike path the past couple of years, and also Art Rocks Monotomy. Uh, which happened, I believe, um, I believe this, this past summer. I don't know, is that accurate, Peter? Um, they have uh, kept the ball rolling on a discussion that's been happening now for several years about including public art as part of the Mass Ave corridor or the East Arlington Mass Ave rebuild project, uh, which is currently underway. So several years ago, I think actually uh, predating my tenure, uh, a group from Arlington Public Art came before the Board of Selectmen with the concept of having uh, multiple dedicated public art locations along the East Arlington Mass Ave corridor uh, to be part of the project. At that time, the board did take favorable action to designate several sites, included, um, and which included these sites that you see on this proposal that was distributed, uh, one around the Grafton Street Island at the intersection of Grafton and Mass Ave, and also uh, at the intersections of Cleveland and Mass Ave near the Fox Library. Uh, the, the idea here would be to put together a process to uh, develop a recruitment, solicit proposals, and then eventually fabricate and install theme-based public art uh, at those two locations or in some variations surrounding those locations. So this is a proposal. It's not necessarily the proposal that the town would execute if funding was approved, but an example of a proposal uh, that we could look at and also solicit some other uh, quotes from, from similar vendors. So the proposal that's before you uh, totals up to a, a request uh, or estimated budget of $10,500. And what that would do is have this consultant work with the town to really put together the, the recruitment or the, the solicitation process, uh, the community engagement process to discuss exactly uh, what, we, what the community would want to see in terms of public art uh, in that area, uh, receive proposals, uh, and then get basically right up to the point of fabrication installation, but this proposal wouldn't cover the building of the art, the payment of the artist, or anything in that regard. I would view that, uh, that portion to be more based on a fundraising effort uh, with m maybe in the future some uh, consideration of town funding, but I would hope uh, to be a larger fundraising effort. So that's the, sort of the, the, the quick and dirty of what we're looking for here um, to, to fund this process for development and then solicitation of some public art along the corridor in East Arlington. Did they do the, um, the paint, the electrical boxes in Arlington? Street? That is APA, yes. Okay. Uh, now, how did they raise those funds, or did individual artists sort of agree to do it for free? So I believe the Transformer Box project was funded by the Arlington Cultural Council, which is the locally appointed state-funded council that gives small art mini-grants. Okay. Uh, are there any questions for the manager? Jonathan? Yeah, um, so, is, is Gene Minio the consultant? Gene Minio is the consultant, okay. yes. And this, this proposal is what you would do as the consultant? As the consultant, yes. Okay, Charlie, Bill. Is, is this connected to, there was an article last year or the year before in town meeting about having an art? The public art fund. Yeah, I, I would say it's related in that the public art fund would be what I would uh, propose house fundraising efforts to fund efforts like the fabrication installation of art or other art projects in town. Because at that time, uh, the proponents argued that uh, that would not involve taxpayer money, that it was a vehicle to hold uh, donations or something to that effect, but they weren't going to be asking for uh, taxpayer money. Yeah, I, I think th there may have been nuance to that argument that they were not currently asking for taxpayer money, but that the fund would be able to house taxpayer money in future, at, you know, should future requests be made. I, I, I don't want to speak for them, Elizabeth but I... Warren is not running for president <laughs> currently. Is <laughs> <laughs> um, So are you saying that you're in favor of using taxpayer money to uh, finance these artworks? You know, you know what, I... I am. Uh, I, I've had 
over the course of the past couple of years, a lot of meetings with folks from both uh, Arlington Public Art or APA and the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, which was the Cultural Commission until it changed its name last year. Um, I think there, there's been a lot of involvement, there's been a lot of energy, and I, I think they've delivered on some of the, the goals they've set, uh, putting together cheerful where you sit, and, and myself seeing literally hundreds of people come into Arlington Center to be part of this arts project, and my assumption being that some portion of those people patronizing the businesses and restaurants uh, in the center. Um, so a, efforts like this, things that build uh, vitality, vibrancy in what would be otherwise business or retail districts, I think do provide value to the town. I'm, I'm, my question was very specific, though. Um, I didn't mean do you support this particular request, which is for a process, right, for a structure. But do you support spending taxpayer money on artworks? I think a reasoned approach to spending taxpayer money on artworks I am supportive of. Okay, Bill. Uh, looks like a very worthy project. I'm just wondering if uh, phase four, which is not included in the budget proposal, uh, <coughs> rather is um, going to be garnered through uh, via fundraising. Uh, so it's kind of like a question mark. Um, is would the project be in jeopardy of not going forward if fundraising <coughs> failed? I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't know enough about fundraising and how much that's required to get the whole scope of work completed. So my, my understanding, well, so, sort of my prerogative is that, yes, those costs, which could be larger costs than this, should be borne predominantly by fundraising. Uh, that said, um, a lot of how big that cost is will be determined by what this process looks like and what decisions are made for art. I mean, a, a very resilient, sort of rugged piece of art put together by, you know, an, an artist of some renown or some experience could have a combined significant cost. But that's, I, that's not a definite or an absolute. Um, in terms of whether it would fail, uh, I suppose rather than fail, we'd have to scale down based on availability of funds. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Dean? So if this is a worthy project that you support, why don't you just cut something from your budget to fund it there? Why do we have a warrant article? Um, that's, a, that's a fair question. I, I guess I would say historically projects such as this have um, have taken this route as opposed to uh, a budgetary route. I'd say a, a fair approach may have been that such a project uh, should instead be a capital request as opposed to an operating budget request. That's what we were talking about, actually. Yeah. Um, and, 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 I, and I think that would be a fair criticism if offered. Okay, John? Uh, if, if I may comment, I think that the it's worthy of discussion on the floor of town meeting, if I may make that suggestion rather than for him to put something out of his budget. I mean, whether you're for it or against it, I think it's worthy of a discussion on the floor of town meeting. Yeah, I'll just try to get to the limit. Okay, okay. I see. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Trump? Uh, I, I, I would say that I think this is a a good idea in general um, to, to set up the process so that there's a way to, to get uh, art in front of the public. But I, th I think I'm deathly afraid of using town funds, taxpayer money, to pay artists. That's a, that, is, that is a hole that has no bottom. And it also is, is rife with potential for conflict because, you know, one person's masterpiece is another person's horror. And, and it can raise all sorts of cultural and religious and other um, issues that are best, uh, you know, I think, not financed by town government when we have other pressing needs uh, to, to face. So I think the process, the idea of having a, a way to get something like this going is a good idea. But, but at the end of the day, I don't think we want to be financing artists. May I? Just a few, a few short uh, responses. Everything you just said are things that come across my mind whenever someone in a role like mine thinks about art, because of course art is always <coughs> in the eye of the beholder, and the beholder right. could not like it very much. There, there is risk involved. Um, in terms of um, precedent, 
I, I think this is a more piece by piece, bit by bit, bit approach, which is not going as far as some other communities go by committing 1% of all capital projects to the arts or something that's more regular and definitive that goes to the arts. This is sort of a, you know, we're okay with this, but we, we, we're not okay with the next one. It sort of gives us a continued choice. And, and also, you know, the, a lot of this energy has created a desire from the arts community for the town to fund some kind of coordinator or facilitator position within the town budget. And I've held very fast and hard against that. Uh, in terms of competing with other uh, more pressing and necessary operating needs. Uh, um, I didn't even necessarily encourage capital investment, uh, but was more open to promoting that or being supportive of that based on the ability for it to be one time or a few times. Um, I've got two questions. Oh, Tom? Just, um, just uh, it's a display that's going to be on Grafton Street and Cleveland Street, whatever, in a case or? It, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly what it would be. It probably wouldn't be in a case. It would probably be in a, you know, uh, the chairman had suggested uh, this as a, as a way to think of it when I talked to him about it the other day. You know, in Boston they have like, the, is it the cows or the frogs or, you know, some, right, something so like that. It could be, it could be a statue. Right, it will be, be, yeah. be out there. Yeah. So, let's say you put it out there and vandalism washes it away where do we get the money to replace I think we'd have to see if we could pursue uh, some kind of insurance policy in the art okay I'm okay. not sure if that would be possible but John yeah I, I just like to point out that right now we subsidize art all over the town the Dallin Museum is a place where we in fact subsidize a place for people to see art uh, all of our historic buildings are, in a manner of speaking, subsidies to art. So having something like this to think in that context, I think, is a really good idea. Thank you. Okay, uh, two questions. Well, one question, one concern. Um, question is, wasn't there a, some kind of an arts lottery um, developed? It was years ago, because it took money away from the lottery. I don't even know if it's still in existence, but a certain part of the general lottery, state lottery, went to public art. Does is, that strike a bell with you? Isn't that what funds the Cultural Council, which gives the local Cultural Councils their mini-grant funding? Okay, that, that, I, I think it is. I'm not positive, but I think that's what it is. You have any idea what kind of money they brought in? It's eight or nine million dollars uh, statewide. statewide. I'd have to confirm that, but that's what comes to mind. Okay, so it seems to me if, if, if um, since the arts lottery rated our money anyway, uh, because that money c comes from the lottery which goes to cities and towns, uh, that might be an alternative source to fund this beginning. Um, but I guess my greatest concern is uh, the reaction on town meeting. And two weeks ago, I wouldn't have worried about that reaction. But today, I worry about the reaction because uh, we had a tragedy in East Arlington, as most of you know, uh, and uh, one of my, he wasn't my neighbor, but he was a street over, he, 91, was killed crossing the, um, uh, crossing Mass Ave, which, as some people have called it, a bit of the Wild West uh, down there, because, uh, you know, there's not a lot of lines and everything like that. And I'm just wondering if, uh, what would you say to the reaction of town meeting member? You just see them, you know, getting up and probably legitimately saying, "Why are we spending twelve million, twelve thousand dollars on art? Why don't we pay twelve thousand dollars in police overtime to put a patrol car with a radar gun down there and stop people from doing forty-five in a third mile, thirty mile an hour zone?" The the first thing I would say is the state is currently investing nearly seven million dollars in improvements to that part of Mass Ave for pedestrian accommodations, bicycle, bike accommodations, motorist accommodations, and public transit accommodations. And that project could have and should have started almost a decade ago and could have been completed by now. That would be my first answer. My second answer is, after a direct conversation with the chief, they can put all the speed patrols they want, but if someone isn't cited for going over you know, 40 or 45 miles an hour, anytime someone's cited for 35, 37, the, the courts throw them out. And, and that's a major frustration of the police department. So I'm not saying it's not a worthy endeavor, but it's not a, it's not a fix all or a, or a solve all either. Okay. Is there any other discussion? 
Okay. Uh, somebody want to make a motion? So move. Uh, what's your recommendation? <laughs> Can't move. Well, what are we doing? What's the request? Uh, 32. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the request, um, you know, this a proposal outlines $10,500 worth of cost. My request would be for $12,000. 12? 12, yeah. 12. 12. Okay, I'll move it for the $12,000. Okay, so $12,000. Is that seconded? Second. Second. Okay, is there any further discussion? So I will say I'm going to vote against it because um, I think art is a worthy endeavor. I think a lot of things are a worthy endeavor, but not everything that's a worthy endeavor right. is a core mission of government. I mean, fighting poverty is a worthy endeavor. Endeavor we don't have a fund that we're going to set up for that. Writing health insurance is a worthy endeavor. We don't have to talk for that. I mean, you know, I think so. I think saying that it's a worthy endeavor, therefore, it's worthy of tax the, the entire tax base to pay for, it, even if it's a small amount. I just don't, I, I've never believed in articles like that, and I, I never will, and I know this is going to, you know, so that's just my opinion on it. Okay, any other discussion, Tom? I'm going to vote against it for the reason is I think it's a wonderful idea, and thank you, Adam, for doing it, but once again, I feel we do something <coughs> with no thought what it's going to cost to maintain this. If something should happen, the money's got to come from somewhere. Vandalism, bad weather, whatever. It, it, we always seem to do that, and then our maintenance, we don't have any maintenance plan to it, and we gotta get the money from somewhere, but I do think it's a good idea, but I'm gonna vote against it because of that reason. Alan? Just addressing Dean's concern, uh, I think if you buy the argument that public art is an economic development measure, then it can be a legitimate use of public tax dollars. So we have to make that connection between public <laughs> and tracking people and, and economic development. But if you could buy that connection, then, then I would argue it is a legitimate expense. Any further discussion? John? Could, I wonder, is it, be, it would be useful in that context to, to somehow tie it in with the our tourist committee or whatever they're called. I forgot what they're called. A-10. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think I can, I can <coughs> Just a suggestion. Yeah, I think it's a good suggestion. Grant. Um, the Indian in the plaza there, who owns that? Who takes care of that? In ta hall? Town Hall Gardens? Yeah. The, t yeah. the town owns that. A and in this year's split between the operating and capital budgets are some restoration and maintenance monies. That's a sim symbol of Arlington in some ways. Absolutely. Those gardens. You know, both the you know compelling arguments, but I think the precedent. My my feeling, the precedent has been set in this sort of thing, so that's going to affect how I vote. Okay. Any other? Bill? I'll go along with uh, my colleague John here. I think that uh, the town and many towns like Arlington already directly or indirectly subsidize the arts, and that you know in the day-to-day -day scurry of business and passing million dollar budget, sometimes we lose sight of uh, what makes us a great town. And uh, we're not asking for a lot of money for something like this. And this might spawn other other, uh, other artistic ventures in the future. So um, I'm in favor of it. OK. Uh, Grant? Um, we're not buying art. We're buying a consultant for 10-5, I think. I, I get. I, I just realized. No, we're not really buying it. We're buying what a consultant's going to say. I believe. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Opposed. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, motion carries 13 to 5. Okay, and uh, the last article we have to deal with is Article 41. Um, <coughs> that is appropriation for overlay, from overlay reserve surplus to, uh, to basically pay for the, uh, pay for the budgets. Uh, conversations with the assessing office, uh, <coughs> they anticipate $350,000. So Article 41 
uh, that the sum of $350,000 hereby is appropriated, transferred from overlay reserve surplus account of the previous fiscal year said son to be utilized in the determination of the tax rate. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Okay, anybody have any questions? This is basically the money that's overlay surplus the assessors declare that goes, goes back to ba basically balance the budget. Any questions? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, so um, <coughs> now I think I'd like to uh, open up the discussion um, on the solar panel project. Um, the manager had come before us uh, several weeks ago and uh, put forth the details. Uh, there were questions from several members of the committee. Uh, he put forth another uh, proposal and, and try to uh, answer as many questions as possible. And I think several of you have been talking with him uh, about this. Um, this is not a uh, appropriation. It doesn't go before town meeting. It's basically uh, if the town, uh, if the finance committee wants to uh, um, endorse the project. So uh, Mr. Manager, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, I, I think I'll defer to any questions or further discussion of the committee. Okay. Uh, is there any questions for the town manager? John? Could you refresh my memory? Um, what would be the savings over the, it's a 20 year period, is that right? What, what would be the so the projections based on the assumptions um, that we discussed last time was <coughs> approximately $2 million. Oh, okay. two, $2 million over the 20 years. That was net present value? That was the net present value. Are there any other questions? Uh, Dick? Two. Uh, I came across an article, I think it was last week, week before. The electric companies have been buying back a lot of this power at retail price, and they can't <coughs> change it to buying it back at wholesale price. What is the, the buyback on this? So, as it is right now in this agreement, and what we would sign as a separate interconnection agreement with the utility yeah. would be to buy it at that retail price. That retail. It's called a, a Class B3 market rate. Yeah, okay. it, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. They, they want to change it. Yeah. Uh, and we, in, in the power purchase agreement, that's one of the items that should net metering credits uh, be eliminated. That's called net metering right. credits when, we, when we, they buy it from us. Uh, be eliminated or substantially changed, uh, we would have to renegotiate okay. to a more now financial the, the, the other thing that brought, this article brought up was in Arizona, where they have a lot of solar power, they are now starting to charge $50 a reading on the meters where we, when they read them because they claim that the solar people are not picking up their share of the generation and transmission cars. Have you heard anything about that? I, I've not heard any discussion about that in Massachusetts. Yeah. I mean, politically, I'd be surprised if Ma the Massachusetts legislature would approve something like that. It doesn't surprise me that they're pursuing that because I. But I, they claim they're pushing the generation and the uh, transmission cost back on people who don't have solar, like myself or. So they claim it's costing $2 million alone in uh, power bills. I, I think it's fair to say, uh, you know, not being an expert in all of yeah. the electricity markets, that solar energy in Massachusetts and in most places <coughs> is, is subsidized by all of us as rate payers. Be because a, lo a lot of the incentives and credits that are created are then are, are absolutely yeah. distributed back yeah. amongst the right there. I understand Massachusetts is very hot on solar power. No pun intended. <laughs> uh, any other, Brian? Um, can we talk about the agreement that um, Charlie sent out, which was I assume the eighty-three page <coughs> agreement in question? Mm -hmm. To me, the only there's no, I only saw one downside in this. Um, and, and I'm as pro solar as it gets. 
Um, on page 16 of the agreement, I don't know if you have it. I, I didn't bring it back down. Um, uh, there's a reference to maybe, this is the only clause that I, that I saw, um, that said that we, as a town, the buyer, um, have, we can take 10 days out of every, let's say, I believe it's <coughs> two years, that you can have downtime. And after that, after the 10th day, then the town actually has to pay in um, to the <coughs> And the only thing that I'm wondering about is, God forbid something happens to any of the roofs, like the snow issues and things that are going on, um, that liability sticks out to me. That 10 days, it, short of, you know, that puts the town on the hook, I think, a little bit. So my perspective is the 10 days is a big win. M most PPAs don't have something like that 10-day clause. I think, and, and it certainly wasn't what Amoresco offered us. So we, we negotiated pretty hard to get that 10-day window so that we could address roof issues, roof maintenance, uh, r other roof issues that would come up over the course of the life of this country. Is that prorated by the number of buildings that we have, I assume, or in the sense that, it, it, that how, many, how many buildings are we in Six buildings. About? Six buildings. Six buildings. So if one roof goes down, and the others are obviously working. That one's down for 10 days. Is it prorated that the maximum would only be one sixth or the number of kilowatts coming out of that particular building? My understanding it's 10 days per system, per building. Per building, yeah. Okay. Now, the, are, are, the, uh, are the solar panels attached to the roofs or they sit on the roofs? The term is ballasted. It's a fancy word for cinder blocks that are wrapped with a protective material to hold, the, uh, hold them down. Okay. Uh, Charlie? Yes. Um, Adam, I, I, I want to thank you for getting this uh, external review, um, and, and I'm glad to see that the, some of these things, the uh, detrimental law and the liability and the uh, assignment have been tightened up. What, what are the other issues you, you referred to here? You said there are other issues that the town will pursue with the advice of Attorney Bat. So he, um, he, he put together, or in working with our energy manager, put together a list. Um, uh, requiring of a performance payment bond uh, for the contractor and their subs to prevent any liens against the town, uh, tightening up of indemnification, um, tightening up of insurance language on the part of Amoresco, uh, further performance assurances uh, in terms of uh, letter of credit or bond uh, that would start uh, at year 15, uh, sort of the, towards the end of, uh, uh, end of the period. Um, but I, I think I mentioned default, uh, tightening up uh, default rights and what uh, a lender or financing company would be responsible for in terms of operation. Um, I think I mentioned transfer rights. Uh, adding some clarification about uh, how an appraiser would be sought if there was uh, to be any termination on the lease pursued. Um, and then actually uh, pursuing a, a tighter or better look for us in terms of changes to net metering credits as opposed to just the elimination of net metering credits. I think I think that's okay. gets to all of them. Thank you. Do you um, so so this? If, you know, from my view, we're making about a hundred thousand dollars a year in this as the current plan is laid out, right? And um, I don't. I mean, none of us can see into the future. We don't know whether the electricity costs are going to go up or down, or whatever is going to happen there, or whether net metering is going to improve or or degrade. Um, but The um, the income of $100,000 a year requires us to assume essentially the the lease on the equipment, right? Liability for the lease on the equipment if we want to change or change the deal or leave the deal. Yes. So we have a yeah. we start out with roughly a four million dollar liability that amortizes down to zero after 20 years. So would you would you invest four million dollars in something to get $100,000 a year? It put in those terms, I, I, do, I don't think I would, but I, I, I don't think that's necessarily the exact situation that we're looking at. It's not the exact, but we have that liability, liability for that amount of return. And I'm just asking the question whether uh, you, you, you really think it's a good investment. Well, I, I think it's a good investment because I think the chance, the risk, 
or the liability of us needing to within the first 5, 10, 15 years of this deal to even pursue termination is very low. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other, any other questions <coughs> from the manager? Um, would anybody like to make a motion on whether the Finance Committee supports the project? I move that the, the Finance Committee support the solar project. Second. Second. Okay, so a motion has been made and seconded to support the project. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say, uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. Opposed? One. Two, three, four, five. We seem to have a 13 to 5. It's a different thing. <laughs> 13 to 5. Okay, so the Finance Committee. Uh, <laughs> okay, so the Finance Committee uh, is voted to support the uh, uh, solar panel project and uh, uh, thank you for your efforts to get it and thank you for getting back to us with the information. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay, the rest of the. Uh, we've got. The school budget to vote on, because we never did vote on that. Uh, Minuteman's done, and then we have the insurance and water and sewer. Um, Mr. Manager, you're welcome to hang around, or you can head home to your family at your leisure. Do, 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 do you prefer I stay, or it's up to you? I don't think you need to. Okay. Uh, Paul. I'd like to just ask one question. Sure. Um, See, I gave you a chance to get out the door. You know, you just, you can't hesitate. Fast enough. Yeah. Uh, I thought I heard some news report that the governor is trying to get us some money for, to pay for the snow, either re the removal the or fix the potholes or something. So he has released uh, $30 million in, I guess you'd call it uh, extra chapter 90, or they're calling uh, winter <coughs> rapid assistance program, the RAP program. Uh, <coughs> for potholes, and that equates to $118,000 and change uh, for Arlington. So we have to access and spend that money by June 30th. So Mike Rodemacher is already putting together a plan. There was already a pothole plan put together. We'll now be able to use some of those other resources for just otherwise annual maintenance and road repair, and we can get some more immediate stuff on those funds. And, and if people know of potholes, they should get on the town website. Yes, yes. What we're doing right now is complaint response uh, and then once we uh, get through that we're going to go snow route by snow route and systematically fill the bottles. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Dick. Could you give us any uh, hint or information you got on the Muga deal? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I know. Okay. That, uh, Oak Tree Development uh, is proposing a 219 unit <coughs> development uh -huh. on what I guess could be described as the uplands within the Mugar property. Uh, it would be 12 townhomes <coughs> and then two multi unit buildings making up the remaining 207 units. Um, they would use just about seven acres of the property. The total property is about 17, I think 17.7 acres. And then their intention would be to either gift or conserve the remaining 10 and a half acres, which are predominantly the wetlands on the site. Um, they, are, uh, they are claiming to have uh, performed a great deal of hydrology uh, engineering and work that would uh, calm any flooding concerns. I don't think the mm -hmm. town uh, yet agrees with that or is yeah. comfortable with that. Uh, they're also pursuing work with MassDOT uh, in terms of getting highway access off of the Lake Street exit directly into this proposed development. Uh, and it would, it would also be, it would be a 40B development. 40B, yeah. uh, so it would have 25% uh, affordable housing. That's about 55. Uh, how close are we on 40B? Do you know up here? So there's two ways to look at 40B. There's percentage of units or percentage of land mass. Yeah. Uh, we're not very close in terms of percentage of units. So we're at 526%. We've got about, uh, I think we're at 878 units short uh, in terms of units. Percentage of land mass, you can demonstrate that um, you have 1.5% of your land mass, which has affordable housing units on that. Uh, we are very close, if not at that 1.5%, uh, based on work that's been done over the past couple of years with the Housing Corporation and whatnot. Yeah. 
Uh, so that uh, we, we feel we feel very comfortable with the housing, affordable housing efforts of the town in, in fighting for it. Right. Thank you. Who do you have to go to to sort of qualify for that? So it's a bit, as I understand it, it's a bit mysterious where the 10% uh, unit equation is a very clear cut matter in, in the eyes of the state, whereas the 1.5% equation is a bit, uh, to use the words of some others, a, a bit mysterious and, and a bit of a <laughs> mystical in how you uh, prove or demonstrate that. So the group that we would ultimately have to approve it, uh, prove it to, if it got to that point, would be the Housing Appeals Committee, which hears 40B applications. <laughs> There's no age limit on this unit. Not that they've mentioned to no, us. No, no, 55 or over. You'll have to wait in line, Dick. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking about the school that Hattie's going to be hanging out from yeah. the ceiling. Okay, are there any other questions for the manager on any general issues? Okay, then uh, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate your time and uh, uh, your good service to the town. And uh, we'll see you on April 13th. All right, thank you. Okay, thank, thank, you. thank, thank, you. thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, um, did you hand this out to everybody? I did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the four page. It, it, you saw it in the Arlington Advocate. Um, originally, we were, this was going to go out with the uh, tax bills, but something with postage. Should, it, something to do with the size of the envelope. No one can yeah. contain it. Um, so, this goes out to the public as much as we can. You know, the manager and the treasurer and other people will fit as much as they can on four pages. And one of the things that I've often said that government does a lousy job on, and I'm talking local, state, federal, is telling people how they spend their money. Uh, so this is a small attempt to try to, to try to do some of that. So, Carolyn? And just for the record, you can get a link to that on your phone, which I did earlier today. It showed up on my phone. I don't think from my flip phone we'll do it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Thank you. Uh, Budgets. School budget. Um, we all had lots of discussion on that. Um, the proposed town appropriation for fiscal 16. I got it here, Ed. Now, yep. 59 million. Okay, no, that's, that's the budget. We only vote the appropriation. Ooh, right. So it's 53, 53 yeah. million. Yeah. Yeah, 53 million, 574, 114. Yeah. Let me make sure that's. Yeah, I checked this last time, but. 53, 574, 114. Yeah. So that is the town's appropriation. The rest of it obviously comes from grants and revolving right. funds and all of that. So, uh, do I have so a motion on the school budget? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. So motion has been made and seconded for 53,574,114. Is there any discussion? Dean? Yeah. So, so a couple follow-up items from our meeting because we had some questions that I went back and asked. Uh, Stephen asked a question that and that when, we were, when Diane and Kathy were talking about the facilities department, their view of the facilities department versus um, Andrew's in terms of budgetary authority and appropriation, there was some conflict where Andrew talked about gray billing and the school maintained the budget and the school department talked about um, transferring the, the money over. So it, as a short answer, Andrew, Andrew and Diane both recognize that that is an area that they have to hash out. They don't have any conflict with one another over and they're confident by the time they're back here next year to actually have a, an FY17 budget that they'll, they'll have it in place. But their point was they've got a, a, a working way to do it in 2016, so it's not a, an issue for right now. The second one was um, there was some the administrative position. They had mentioned, the school department had mentioned the administrative position. Tom Manager's presentation didn't mention the administrative position. It, it's another area that they're trying to work out. If it, the town doesn't feel at this moment that they're convinced that they need to add the position, or neither side really, because I guess most of the work, as I understand it, or three quarters of the work, let's say, is being done by a school department person. So the money right now is in the school department. It's going to stay in the school department. If they get to the point over the summer time where they feel like they <coughs> die of the position, they will. It looks like they're not going to, so the money will just be retained in the school department budget until. Um, at least FY17. 
Okay, is there any other discussion? Charlie? Yes. Um, I, I'm, continued, I'm continuing to be, or I am yet again, very um, concerned about the school budget and the way they have approached it. The, several years ago, the school department requested that the special education rate of growth uh, go from 3.5% to 7% because this was, quote unquote, the long-term trend. Um, I'm, as an aside, uh, in the past, the school department had promised to bring us a rolling history, 10-year rolling history on the special education costs. And uh, they, they brought one last year, then they disavowed it, and they did not bring one this year. And I made a request of uh, Diane Johnson for one, and I haven't, haven't yet received it. But what's happened in the last couple of years is that the special education costs have not risen at 7% a year. And the school department has just taken that money that did not go into special education and has put it into general education. Now, I'm not talking about you know, nickels and dimes here. In, if you look on, in this presentation that they gave us last week, on page 27, in the far right hand column, they talk about the fiscal year 16 budget without a contract settlement. And the top line is the, the top line is the, is the base at 15,943,127 is the amount of money that they expect to spend on special education. The next line is the town, quote, quote unquote, the town appropriation for special education based on the 7% metric. And the difference is $1,558,328. Now, Superintendent Bodie made a, you know, a great deal of comment that this doesn't include the contract settlements and there's going to be a contract settlement that has to be dealt with, etc. But if you assume that the entire uh, $15,943,127 was uh, labor, and it's not, a lot of it is outside expenses, but if you assume that was all labor and, and, that, and, and there was an, a, a, you know arm's length negotiation, um, in collective bargaining, and they got a 3% raise. Then that would be roughly 500, a little bit over $500,000. So that would eat up about $500,000 of that $1,558,000. So there's a million dollars there that's unaccounted for, and that's what I was asking about the other night. That million dollars is not going into special education. It's not going into the Special Education Reserve Fund. It's being spent broadly on the general education side. So what we're dealing with is the general education side is going up 3.5%. Now, if you, I'm just sort of doing this from memory, but I think the, um, the general education plus the, well, let's say this, the whole budget less special education comes out to somewhere around $34 million. $1 million is another 3% increase. So we're talking about building up the, the, the spending level on the general education side by 6.5%, not 3.5%. And meanwhile, the town side is cutting their budget in order to hold off the time when we're going to need to have an override. And, and what the school is doing is they're increasing their base during this time, pushing us closer to an override. And I think they're paying, playing footloose and fancy free with the taxpayers' money, contrary to, uh, to the, to the, to the five-year plan or long-range plan, and, to the, and, and, and the long-range planning committee went to this 7% and 3.5% to accommodate what they argue is their high cost of special education mm -hmm. due to outside, you know, the, the people moving in from Utah that are coming to uh, Arlington to, to get the special education benefits. Now, the fact is, I went through that special education budget last year, and I had lengthy discussions with, with, with uh, Dean about this. And um, 
The special education budget is not being driven by outside costs. It's being driven by out of control spending inside the Arlington school system. Consultants, all, you know, all sorts of things that they, that they spend money on and haven't projected in, in the first place. So I'm against the school budget. And I'm going to make a substitute motion that we reduce the school budget by $1 million. Because that money from the special education budget is not being used in special education. It's supposed to be used in special education. If they do have an overrun this year in special education, it's not reserved. The money's being spent someplace else. And they wouldn't answer the question the, the other night. Fiscal 13 was up 3.42%. Fiscal 14 was up 11.74%. Fiscal 15, of course, that's still going, was up 3.3%. And it, and it seems to me that as long as the average for 10 years, which I think is what long-term planning was looking at, is a 7%, then uh, it, it, it seems what they're doing is reasonable because when it goes up 12% and they've only budgeted 7%, then they've got to reach into the general education and pull money out of general education to fund the special ed. And in those times when they project it's going to be below 7%, they're in effect taking, like Charlie said, taking money from special ed and helping the general ed. But overall, over a period of time, it balances out to about 7%. Um, Four-year average here was 7.72. Five-year average is, is 6.87. Um, so, so I think the budget is, is, is reasonable and we should support it. I think it was John Dice, though, made a suggestion last night. Um, and if I'm giving you credit, I'll take it away later. You know, you know, um, that I had a long talk with the uh, superintendent today is that maybe what they should be doing is, um, I'm sort of arguing what against myself what I did the other night, is in the special ed budget, figure out what they project it's going ahead, and then have another line item right in the budget that says uh, special ed reserve X dollars to bring the whole thing up to 7%. And then if the, uh, if the money's less than 7%, they could move that into the special education stabilization fund. But, uh, and, and so I suggested that for next year they might want to consider doing that and sort of take this whole issue off the table. But like I said, it's some years they're ta they take from, a lot of years they take from general ed to give the special ed, and then in some years they sort of pay it back by giving more from special ed and the general ed. Over a period of time it seems to balance out to the 7%. So that's my two cents, uh, Frank. Um, you, I think you have the right idea except for one problem and that Charlie's pointing out, and that is that they're spending that money, so they don't have it. And what I see as the problem is two, three years down the road, you're getting more kids and more kids and more kids growing, and all of a sudden you get a van load of kids from some other state, I'm not going to blame Utah, um, and there, there really is a problem. If they take that money that's been growing exponentially, that's now in the general education budget, which is <coughs> over three or four years, could be four million, five million dollars, and they don't have it, they're going to get whipsawed on both sides. If one, on, a, on, a one, on a one year, that's not necessarily a huge problem, but if it goes on, that becomes a problem. If they took that 7% and they had a 5% increase so they take that two percent put it in their little reserve fund and the following year they put it in the reserve fund and don't spend it then they don't have that problem yeah well if uh, and that's what they're trying to do um but they're not but but they have to pay their bills special ed has to be paid so halfway through the year if if, if they've got two of the kids come in from utah uh they have to go into the budgets pull money out of items and spend it on special ed because not having money is not an excuse not to I understand, I understand that. That's what I'm saying. I think they're going to whips on both sides. They're going to get whips on the general ed, which is growing, and they're going to get whips on the spend, which is growing, you know, and, and that year that it happens. Yeah. Okay, Alan and John. I was thinking a little more about my analogy of, of, 
unpredictable snow, snow and ice expenditures. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when the DPW gets an emergency expense, whether it's snow and ice or a big water main blows up or something, they have projects they can defer. They can say, we won't pave Gray Street this year, we'll pay it, pave it next year. On the other hand, if they have lower than expected expenditures, they have plenty of projects in the queue. They can build some more sidewalks or things that are going to happen anyway. They can adjust the timing. I don't know if the school budget has those sort of projects that they can uh, you know, defer or not, sort of capital. So if they, if, if they had a surplus in the unpredictable part of their budget, which they could invest today to defer a future cost the way DPW can, then it would be, you know, it'd be a way to sort of smooth things out. But if they're taking that surplus and hiring teachers or starting programs that have long-term obligations, even pensions, not pensions, but long-term obligations, then it's then, then that's when you get the double whipsaw. There's no, there's nothing to cut. It makes it much more difficult to cut back. And my question is, is is there would there be a problem if there's if the special ed reserve fund wasn't there, it was too low. If they would come to the finance committee and there was money in the reserve fund to handle that on a short-term basis, well, the, the reserve fund is the town's reserve fund. Uh, Haven't we always said it would be available to the schools? The, the, the whole town. The first thing I'd be looking for is for the school department to go to their own reserves, yeah, yeah right. which are substantial. Yeah. But what if they were insufficient? Well, that, that is the, uh, uh, the the town's reserve fund, our fund. That's not our fund; it's the town's fund. And then, if that doesn't work, uh, special town meeting. They vote money from free cash. Yeah. Right. If, 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 say, in the extreme, you combined the special ed reserve fund, you took the money from the special ed stabilization fund and put it in our reserve fund and sort of sequestered it as being available for a special ed emergency, wouldn't that be essentially the same situation, but with more flexibility because it would only be the finance committee and not town meeting? So you could respond quickly. Yeah, but there were, the problem with the town's reserve fund is that at the end, on June 30th, it disappears. Mm -hmm. And they want to use the stabilization fund because it doesn't disappear, it continues, uh, and, and, and is transparent. I mean, that's what they want to do. So it would have to be a recommendation of the long-term planning committee, committee to make sure that the reserve fund appropriation every year was sufficient to cover you know, any reasonable. Well, and that's why we've been increasing it. Yeah, you know, and I mean, increase it even more to cover a special ed emergency. Uh, John, did you have a? Yeah. Um, I continue to be frustrated by, well, frustrated is a wrong number, uh, concerned about the 7% year on year on year. And uh, if you look at this chart, it's really rather amazing that special education is now maybe a third of the whole budget or something like that. Um, does anybody have any idea what it looks like in other school systems or other towns? No, I think I asked that question last time and I think we didn't get the specific answer because Siemenson, Lexington might be m higher than us, whereas the Belmont is lower. And the Siemens only gave two examples because that's what I wanted to find out because I'm not really sure that I want to see the special education budget keep going compared to the general education and I don't want to pull the money away from the general education to the special education. But you know, that so is what's happening. Yeah, that, and that is what I mean, it, that's, yeah. that's, that's clearly what's happening and if it continues, yeah. uh, it's, it, it's as unsustainable as healthcare used to be unsustainable. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <coughs> I mean, you go to a minute man and they're 40, I think it, uh, 45 percent, Stephen? Yeah. For, yeah. for, uh, special ed. It, it depends on the community, um, you know, social economic base, that type of thing. But do, do we have any issues? Every community has this problem. And every community is, by the way, the community that everyone in the world goes to to get special education services. Every superintendent says the same speech to their yeah, finance think committee, right. school committee, and everyone. Right. You know, they, they, they use the cooperative to try to help. Uh, they set up the programs that they have. Um, some kids they, go to what? I they wish they had talked more about it, to tell you the truth, you know, about the situation. I mean, it's clear that it's clearly the biggest problem they have. They know that. One way or another. Yeah. And if, if, the, if 
the average has come down a bit recently, but it was at like 12 percent jump to you know, year before last or something like that, right? Also, so I, 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 I'd really like to know if we can be sure that it's being done as, as properly as it should be. Fiscal for, uh, for oh, wait a minute. Um, oh. I think Charlie was next. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, that um, the outside education costs, the outside education costs, while they have a variance and they do have an unpredictable characteristic to them, right. they've actually been dropping. Okay, the overruns in the special education department have been internally, primarily internally generated. And in, in, in last year, and now again this year, they're forecasting well under the seven percent, and they're putting that. They're not saving that money. It's not going into reserve. It's not going into the stabilization fund. They're spending it somewhere else. So that's going to increase the base of the of the general education. And and if there's a problem in the special education, they they don't have it, unless they have. They maybe have money squirreled away someplace else. They haven't told us about. But but they don't. It's not it's not earmarked for special education. Carolyn. Can I make a motion that we create some sort of regulation for them so that they must put the money into their stabilization? Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. We, could, we could recommend, mm -hmm. in other words, for example, you know, what I, I, try, I suggested to the superintendent that, you know, from now on, just put a 7% reserve, you know, in the special education budget. And now, the day after town meeting passes the budget, the school committee can shift everything around however they want. That's, there's nothing we can do about that. But all we vote is the bottom line. Even the five line items that Alan puts in the budget is really sort of irrelevant. It's only the bottom line that we actually, actually vote. Dick? An uh, example of uh, special ed. In fiscal 14, they had an $800,000 overrun special ed that they had to draw out of their general funds. That's, that's the point where it went down yeah. uh, 12, 12 percent that one year. Yeah. Yeah. If, you ever, if you ever see the bills see, we get from the uh, outside vendors that they send these kids out to, they knock your socks right off. You couldn't believe it. Also, another special ed that they had to add was a social worker in every school. <coughs> they had to add psychology. It's unbelievable what these kids come to school with the problems. And that the, the schools are acting as mothers and fathers and doctors and to all these kids. And this is where a lot of it is, is right there. Oh. Okay, um, Car I'm sorry, Carolyn, did I cut you off? Well, I guess I would, what I, um, what I'm, the way I'm probably going to vote is to vote against the budget, um, and my recommendation is that we do if we really want them to change things in the long run. Because unless we send a message that says you need to be more um, fiscally transparent about where this money is going, then as you said, the school committee can do whatever they want. And they will do whatever they want, but... Well, but they, they are being transparent where the money's going. I mean, it's all there in the, in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or being more fiscally responsible, responsible about of their special ed budget, I should yeah. say. That. Okay, uh, Tom. The other night I was, I was thinking about when I got home what Charlie said, and I got out of this was the three and a half percent, four percent that they didn't think they were going to use in special ed, that they would fold into the sped or the, or, or the general education. <laughs> I, I'm not getting a good feeling are they throwing it into the general education? Are they moving it somewhere else that isn't, you know, whether it be administration or something. I, I just didn't get that good feeling because if they're looking to take money, in my opinion, if I was looking to take money to put it back into my reserve fund, I would just come up and say, guys, I got a zero reserve fund. We got to put money back in and just I'm going to do it. They came from the rear and, and it just didn't seem right. I think I feel maybe a little like Charlie that I don't think it's going where they say it's going. It's moving past general education and maybe moving up up the floors. That, that's how I got out of it. Right. Um, okay, so a couple of things. So first, we shouldn't be concerned that Arlington is a town that people are moving into for special ed. 
I, I know a half dozen families that have moved out of Arlington because of problems with the funding and structure of special education in Arlington. Uh, I, I would have done that if, if my roots weren't so great here. So Arlington is not a town known for great, you know, shining special ed services. In fact, you know, we had a state review a couple years ago that identified a lot of problems, and a lot of the internal budget that's been built up is for team chairs, social workers, psychologists that were missing in Arlington that everybody else, not everybody else, but every other, you know, other towns do have that the state required us to add. So um, we shouldn't worry <coughs> about that. The 7% increase that we see every year, Arlington is approaching this in a more transparent manner than other towns. Other towns don't have this discussion with the se special separate ed, regular ed budget. Their education budget goes up 5% a year, just like ours. Ours, on a blended average, is 5% a year, so three and a half, seven percent If you look at other districts around us, they're going up 5% a year because special ed is driving the cost, they're just not talking about it. So it's an it's a issue that everybody's facing, and it's not unique to Arlington, and we're being more transparent about it. So the other thing I wanted to say is that when you talk to younger parents, to, to people that have kids in schools, there's a huge demand for more services. They want those social workers, they want, there's a, there's a, a petition going around town for longer art classes, and there's a lot of demand for things that we as a town aren't giving people, you know, and the school committee is facing those pressures every day. They're going to spend every single cent we give them, you know. They're trying to be responsible at the end of the year. If they have money left over, they'll put it into the special ed reserve, but they, they're facing strong demands, and, and the only limit on them is what's in the long-range plan, and that's what everybody has agreed to. Everybody's agreed to this long-range plan. So maybe next year, the long-range planning committee can look at this issue, and 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 you know your recommendation, uh, Alan, to 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 hold the special ed funds in a reserve and not let them spend it on something else is something that can be discussed. But also discussed with along along with that is responding to these demands for for better education in Arlington. So. I think, you know, we talk a lot about, let's push the override out, let's push the override out. I've talked to dozens of people that would go to the mat for an override tomorrow to get those art classes and that better education. So, you know, I think we have somewhere on this committee somewhat of a biased view about what's happening in town and what our, what our citizens want. But I support the budget at this. Okay, Eugene. Um, so I am gonna vote for the budget. I do support the budget. I'm gonna ask, maybe even beg, that you vote to support the budget. Um, we, we've talked about special ed. You gotta remember, and I said this last time, school department is facing three pressures. They're facing special ed pressure, facing the regular increases, and they're also facing this large enrollment. You know, and we, 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 we sort of pass it off, but what we have to remember is that 170 net kids come into the district this year. They didn't get a dime, not a dime, for those children this year. They're gonna get the money one year in arrears. They're gonna get the money next year to deal with the kids that showed up this year. The problem is another 170 kids are gonna show up next year. They're gonna have the money to deal with those. So are they doing their best with the budget? They are. And I, and I think they're doing what, and I've said this before when we've had this similar discussion, they're being held accountable in the way that we always say they need, that they should be, which is in special ed, if it goes up 12%, we don't give them another dime. If it went up 12% for five straight years, we're not going to give them another dime. They're going to have to manage it. So when it's under in these years, we, we can't just start to start hammering away at them and demanding that they put things into special ed funds and they do this and they do that. Because if you're going to put all the handcuffs on them when it's under, the minute it flips, you've got to be willing to help them out that way. And I don't think we want to do it when it flips flips the other way. Um, and the last thing is, you know, I, I think when it does regard, I think I spent a lot of time last year after um, after we <laughs> talked about special ed last year, and I know that um, Brian Dick and I had a meeting with the, with the school committee and we went over some of the different things and I had talked to the CFO and the superintendent throughout the year about it. They, they have a lot, a lot of their pressures internally, because Charlie talks a lot about the internal pressures on special ed. So like Len alluded to, a lot of these are state mandated. A lot of these are, 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 are mandates. You know, when you look at the process of from the time a parent, in today's in regulatory environment, from the time a parent requests, you know, an evaluation for their child to the day it has to be delivered is 45 days. There's no if, there's no if, there's no judgment. You have to go. And there are a lot of regulatory things that they have to deal with. And I think they're trying to deal with it 
and I think they're trying to deal with it the best that they can. I don't think there's, you know, I wish I could say that there was a, a magic bullet or there was a way to control it or things like that. Um, and, and I think the difficult thing is you sort of say, you know, like John said, you feel like there are these unfunded mandates and there are these things that they're, um, that they're doing and, and things like that. And so the last thing I'm going to say is probably the most unpolitically correct thing I might have ever said at this finance committee, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's the truth. The error of being able to pass a kid through the public school system for 12 years and have him go get a job at a factory at Raytheon and Waltham and work there for 40 years and retire with a pension is gone. They need an employable skill. They need to be brought up. And I think that's the challenge of the modern day public school system is how do you get these children educated <coughs> and into being productive members of society with a skill, with a job, and, and go there. And we're not talking about the the, the top 5% that go to a nice, fine Ivy League university. We're talking about the 10% of kids who struggle through college, you know, who really need that extra attention and learning and things like that, so they are placed. And I think that's where a lot of times the special education resources are going is to prepare those children who we all know have to be equipped for jobs, you know, to get there. So I'm going to vote to support it. I beg that everybody else vote to support it, and that's it. Thanks. Okay, just going around the table, Grant. <laughs> not take too much time, but confused about the external versus internal. I'm always under the impression that it's the shipping the out external to the system is the most expensive, and, and the Charlie indicates it's really the internal. And Charlie and Dean uh, asked him to share outs uh, what were outside of consultants being the most expensive internal, and sharing me to, to having to re read through it. What were the other high uh, high internal costs? Right. Yeah, I just like to say that uh, the external costs. Uh, this is from the, this is from the report that uh, Diane Johnson gave us last year, which she failed to update and gave us this year. Right. Okay, but the uh, the ex the total tuition, meaning the outside payments that they make, costs over over uh, nine years grew at four point five percent, and over the last five years grew at two point one percent. Okay. The one year, uh, 2014, there was a 17 percent increase, mm -hmm. but in the in the other years there were there were it was flat or went down. Okay. <coughs> the on the other hand, if you look at the internal instructional services, supervisory went up 19 percent, teaching went up six seven percent. Uh, compound. This is compounded. Um, guidance went up 16 percent. Psychological went up 56 percent. I mean. Those are those are where the big growth numbers are inside, so that the, you know the Utah kids are not driving this thing. There's, I, uh, so there's a strange rela strange relationship that we're actually by reducing the external costs we're actually saving something out of the budget. You know, it, that's what I kind of heard there. That we're actually by reducing it, it's such this weird thing, but but we're also increasing the in internal costs. Would it actually be cheaper, uh, more economic, to ship them extra, to, to say we can't? No, no, no. No, it's a lot no. more. No, no, no. It's well, 60 to 80,000 a kid, right? That's what's my understanding. Plus, trans plus, plus, yeah, plus transportation, which is yeah. another 20. No, and, and according to my, my calculation from her sheets, the compound growth rate over the last nine years was 7.4%. Over the last five years, was 5.5% of everything. So the, so the annual growth rate is dropping. And that's why they have this surplus this year, which they're spending some, somewhere else. Right. And I mean, it, I, I'm for, I mean, I think they should be managing this institution, which takes up more than 50% of the town taxpayers' money with, in, a, in, a, in a transparent and uh, highly focused manner, OK? And, and saying that they're going to they're going to call this seven percent uh, for special education revenue, and then put it into something else is misleading to the finance committee, to the town meeting, to the taxpayers. It's 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 mismanagement, for my view. Anyway, I, 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 okay, yeah, Stephen, my view. Yeah, I, I um, gave a lot of thought to what Charlie said the other night, and, and I go back to what the commitment was in the um, the override several years ago and, and so one of the commitments is town and school operating budgets are capped at three percent three and a half percent per year and then the additional allowance of up to seven percent shall be allowed for documented special ed cost increases so the budget that we got we're talking about 
pressures on special education. But the budget we received has a 1.6% increase in special ed for next year. So to Charlie's point, 7% less than 1.6 is going somewhere else. So I would rather see the school department come in here and say, look, special ed is down next year, but we have compelling needs elsewhere, and that's where it's going to go, and that's why we want you to vote this hybrid of 7% on special ed plus, plus the uh, amount on general ed. And we didn't hear that. And, and Charlie asked the question, where are you spending the money if you're not spent increasing special ed by 7%? We never got an answer. And again, I, I have three kids, I have two kids still presently in the public schools. I've been a big advocate of the public schools, but I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not getting those answers. So the question is, as a committee, if, if we vote for the budget, what we're really saying is, we know you're not spending 7%. We know you haven't documented increases next year for 7%, but we think that, that you've made a compelling case for the rest of your budget. And if that's what people want to vote, then go ahead and vote. It's not the commitment that we made. Um, it's certainly not what we were told, and I, and I think you know, we deserve better um, in terms of where the money is being spent. So to the extent that we say special ed costs are out of control, and it, that's not the issue for next year. The issue for next year is what's being planned is less than the 7%. So um, I'm probably going to support the number, but I, I, I also think we get into a really bad habit on this committee and over the years of asking questions and saying, can you come back next year? Or can you come back next week? And we, we won't receive anything until next March when they're in here again. So I'd like to bring them back in and, and, and you know, tell us, tell us what's going on. We, you know, we can vote the budget on, but let's get some answers. And, and, and you know, let's set a date. And if we don't get answers, let, let's get it out there that, that we're not satisfied with what we're receiving. And Charlie asked for the 10 years in special ed. We want to know where the, the difference between the 7% uh, on, on, and the 1.6 is going. And I'd still love to get my revenue numbers. But I, I think if, if we don't do something and send a message, We'll be back here next March 20th or March 18th, and, and it will be the same problem. And there won't, there will not have been enough time to prepare answers for us before our meeting, and we'll go another year. So that's, so just know what you're voting on. Yeah. Okay, John. Uh, I'm glad you said that because I was about to suggest the same thing. Let me ask him to come back in. But I'd like to point something else out, and that's that the things that Charlie, uh, many of the things that Charlie talked about that were increasing in cost were the kinds of things that were addressed fairly successfully a few years ago by AYCC. These are all counseling kinds of things for which AYCC now bills insurance. So AYCC is paying its way now. Didn't used to, we used to subsidize it, you know, 100, 150,000, 200,000 a year. That's <coughs> not true anymore. So I'd like to know whether or not they are, they are addressing that whole business in a way that's appropriate, given that we have something like AYCC here that can provide counseling to students, for example. So I, I, I strongly support what Steve says. And maybe what we should do, maybe the way we do that is vote, to suggest we vote the, the budget down and say we want you to come back in and justify things. Well, doesn't AYCC get some of its money from the schools? Yes, but maybe they ought to look at what AYCC might be able to do in the context of holding these costs down and, and the success AYCC has had in building insurance companies with some of that money. Dick? If you take it, really look at your special ed budget, you're going to see what they have done is they've tried to take, they have saved money by not sending kids out of, out of town. And they've built it in town their own special ed department to service these kids, including special language teachers, uh, math teachers that are helpers for these kids, reading. Uh, and that is, that's all up in here. And the, uh, they've tried to bring kids back in to save money and they've done it, and and uh, I don't see. I see it like last year they spent uh, ten million, basically ten million uh, 
ten million dollars. But, but, but they they promised they promised year after year they were going to come back and talk about that. They didn't talk about it very much at all this year, in my opinion. I, I I'd like if that's true. I'd like to hear about it from them. Did, did you read there exactly how the money they're spending the money in in here? It's all in here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, n not in the detailed level that you probably have, but I have looked at it. Yeah. Okay, Paul. Um, I was just thinking along the same lines that, that John was mentioning that we have the option of voting a lower number tonight and asking them to come back April 13th and convince us to, to vote a higher number. When? Well, I mean, I, I think that's what our subcommittee was supposed to be doing. So, I mean, I realize that we're a full committee and it's our prerogative to go back and ask for more information and delay the budget, but. I mean, we've had this budget since February 12th, and if people had concerns, they could have been communicated to our subcommittee, which could have gotten answers. So again, I, people are asking really good questions, and it's good discussion to be had, but for our relationship with, with the school committee, I mean, I think this, this, type, of, this type of thing, the question, some of the questions that were asked uh, as sort of a, in a gotcha way just breaks down the relationship and builds distrust, and that's why when you ask a question, you don't get an honest answer because they're, they feel like they're in a gotcha situation, and they shouldn't. They should be more open about it. The correct answer to the, correct answer to the question was, well, yes, it's the same thing as last year. We think we have a lower, we're projecting lower special ed increases, so we're able to meet some of the other needs as a result of those 170 students, so we're putting the money somewhere else. They didn't say that because they thought they were getting a gotcha question, and they, they knew that the, the response, they, they, they were concerned the response was going to be, well, 7%, 7% has to be in special ed. So from a relationship perspective, I think some of the, the suggestions are not going to be helpful. It's just going to, to deteriorate the relationship when we had a subcommittee <coughs> working on this for a couple of months now. Ken? Yeah. No, Nadine, I, I don't have any, any answers to this, but I think it's sort of, I sit back here and I say, if we presented budgets, my own committees, and in that budget we presented, we said we're going to let this manager take money in Part A, and if he has own discretion, shift it to Part B if, if he wants. And if we give any budgets like that, they would be all over us. Yet we still don't want to make an exception for the uh, school committee that they don't have to put, if they say special ed gets this X amount of money, well, if we don't use it all up, we can use it elsewhere. No one else in the town uh, can do that. Well, oh, why give a special arrangement? Wait, 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 The state law allows that. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it's, uh, you know, the state law says town meeting has control of the bottom line. I realize That's that. It. So I, I don't think there's any, um, you know, once town meeting votes the bottom line, they can do what, what, what but I'm talking about the shifting process. I mean, no one else granted the state law that, that they can do it. Because the sales says they can do it, and the others cannot do it, it sort of bothers me. Well, um, okay, moving along, Carolyn. Well, I, I mean, in response to him, I've, you know, I've been on the committee now. This is my fourth year. I look at four budgets, and I can assure you that their that managers are shifting monies as they need to during the course of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They do that, and so and so that's actually a, an interesting argument for allowing the school to do what it needs to do. Well, I mean, what I would say about shifting, and I actually just pulled up one budget. I pulled up the planning budget, right? So, but I'm just going to read this. From 13 to 60 in the budget, one from 335 to 341 to 402 to 416. So if you look at 341 to 402, that's more than 2.5%. All so, right? So if we're going to be militant, we got to go cut that budget because that went over 2.5%. But we're not going to do that because what we said is, hey, wait a sec. As long as Adam comes in at 2.5%, he can do pretty much whatever he wants within his budgets, as long as he delivers his two and a half percent. And I think where we've gone down a path here is we're saying time out. School department, we give that courtesy to the manager. Well, you don't get that courtesy. Your ability to manage your own money is suddenly under question. And we're saying we want a rigid silo in all sorts of places. And, and, and it just it doesn't work like that. And I think one of the challenges we also have to remember, and I, I, I was, when I've talked to the school department throughout the year, we, we voted as a budget, as one school budget, but it's not really that. 
right? Because they have a utility budget on our, I mean, if we were to map it out in comparison to the town, it would have to be like 15, 10 different budgets. We have to have a, we'd have to have an administration, because the police, we have an administration, police administration budget. <coughs> we have the, you know, the patrolmen. We have some stuff over here with some stuff over there. I mean, that's the same thing with the school department. They have these different things. And is special ed the most, you know, painstaking one? Yeah, but there's just, there's stuff here and there. And the example I gave at the, when we did the minutes is, it, it's funny, they talked in the meeting about special ed being down in the air. It wasn't. If you go take the budget we got last year, it was 3.3, it was like 3,020,000. You take the projection now, it's at 3,120,000. Where their savings came from wasn't special ed; it came from the utilities being down. They said it later on the in their in their presentation. If you had caught it, and that's how they're putting money into the reserve fund. And so, I mean, it's it's a lot of ways like 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 that. And I, I would also point out, if we, on the same um, rigid line, is I can almost assure you that Adam's going to be standing before us at our last meeting of the year in June, um, shifting money all sorts of places back and forth between departments to get to a balance. And if we want to take a line. We should say, no, don't do that. Go over budget, special town meeting. We'll go fix your budget retro. We would never do that. And so I think we're, we gotta be a little fair. Okay, uh, right. I didn't really want to get into shifting budgets, but that's just not even, in, none of this is even an issue. The state law set it up. They're allowed to do it. Every school system in, this, in the state does it. It's, a not, a, it's not an issue. The only thing we really have on our plate right now is approving this budget. Steve had a question about bringing them in to discuss what's going on. Um, as I said before, personally, I think they should be putting the money, the excess, the excess money should go into reserve fund. They have the right to do whatever they want. I think it really comes down to the deal that they made with the town, okay? And are they going, and is that just the cash they get? And that just means they can have it, but later on, if something blows up, you know that that they got to live with that, and we, you know we you know it's our town, it's our school system. We own all of it, collectively. Um, I think I'm going to support the budget. I just wish that they would be a little bit more have more foresight with the extra revenues rather than just okay, we have it, we can spend it. And oh, by the way, and in answer to your question, it's already they're spending the money in the budget, and they gave us that in February. So if you I'm not directed strictly at you, but they gave us all that information. And you know, it's up to us to do whatever we want with it. Okay. Uh, I, you know, I think we need to wrap this up so we could, uh, could we could yeah, get through it. Could I, 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 could I have a comment? I've, I've kind of waited until <laughs> everybody had a turn. Uh, I don't, I, I'm not going to put any more light on, on this dilemma that we have. But as a member of the school committee for 15 years, I felt like I was sitting at a 15-year school committee meeting tonight. The issue of special education, the cost of special ed education, the planning of education has been a dilemma in the state of Massachusetts for years. Um, it's a mandated program that the state had <coughs> given to the cities and towns with not a lot of money backing it up. The cost of, of the program is phenomenal. The, at different times, through different year, uh, periods of time, they've d decided, well, if the cost of sending students out on a special ed program was too costly. Let's try and bring them back for as an inclusion. But when we bring them back as an inclusion, we have to add this. We have to have assistance. We have to ha have special uh, wheelchairs maybe, or, or special accommodations for in a classroom. Um, that factor develops another cost item. Sending them out was the transportation Cost of sending them out of, out of the, say, the town, uh, we're talking about the town, the town of Allington, we had no control over whatsoever. The state sets that rate. And normally that rate is set sometime after all the budgets are set. Right, Dick? Right. Okay. So this issue of special ed and the cost of that has been ar around my 15 years in the school committee, and I've been off the school committee for 12 years. Having said that, I would have much rather have a presentation from the school department that didn't leave us with, with, with this dilemma of, of the presentation. Uh, one person might say, well, I was, I was waiting to have the, the rug pulled from underneath me. I don't think so. I think when you come in, you better serve a committee like this, present the full, the 
full facts of your budget. Um, what I sit back and say, I think the superintendent of schools should add, 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 more, add more to the conversation. Listening to the fi chief, chief financial officer, to me the lady knows what she's talking about, but it's, to me, it's how it's presented, which in turn d develops a conflict. Um, you're, you're right, Steve. I don't think we, we, we got our answers to, our que to, to Charlie's questions. I don't know if calling them back would serve any, any further purpose. What I think should be done is it, sh it should be discussed at town meeting among the full the legislative body. Um, I sit here and I'm torn between, I understand what Charlie's saying, I agree with Charlie's saying, um, I agree with some of what you've said, not all of it because when I was first on the school committee, yes, there was many people coming back to the town of Arlington for what special ed offered for, for, the, for the people in the town of Arlington. It has since changed a little bit, but they were coming back, no question about it. And that pushed up special ed, uh, the cost of special ed, but it's, it's a phenomenal cost and I predict at some point special ed is going to over, will be more money than, than the general ed. Because everybody is entitled to an educational plan. An educational plan is special ed in some degree or some form or fashion. That's why you have them all. In, uh, uh, at one time we cut back on school psychologists. We cut back on all the things that we've now had to, to put back in over a period of time. So it goes around and around. Um, and I, I, like I said, I felt like I was sitting at a 15-year school committee meeting uh, w w without any true answers. So that's my little, my little say. But um, again, I, I think in, in presenting to us, us the finance committee, not a school committee, um, I think their presentation, when we, we weren't looking at anything, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to say everything is in balance, everything is um, transparent, it, and everything is okay. Now, again, I'm not, any good manage, uh, management has to have a certain set of funds put aside for the unexpected. That's to me, is good management. But say that. But, um, you know, if you've got X amount of dollars and you, and you keep on saying, well, it's going to be for pay raises, it's going to be for pay raises, it's going to be for pay raises. I don't think so. Or else it's going to be a heck of a pay raise. So that's my end of my little thing. Thank you for listening to me. Okay, okay just to uh, try to wrap this up. I don't think the problem was in the numbers that were presented. You had, we had the numbers like two or three weeks ago, um, and we have a subcommittee that people could have funneled questions through. Uh, they came to us five, six, seven, eight years ago, didn't matter which superintendent it was, and the plan was to build up the interior special education programs so that they, parents would want to send their kids and keep them in town as opposed to sending them to Carroll School in Lincoln for $80,000 a year plus transportation. So, you know, it if they were successful, then the out of district would go down or maybe level and the in district would go up. So, you know, that doesn't bother me. That's what they said they were going to do. And that's caused at least the last couple, uh, this year and maybe next year, uh, to, to be below the, the uh, 7%. Um, unfortunately, um, some people are not terribly articulate in, in answering questions. And I think that was one of the problems, uh, uh, that was one of the problems the other night, or Monday night. Um, I, I think all the numbers were there. I think they were transparent. If they weren't going to be transparent, they'd say, okay, we're going to have a problem. Let's build up the special ed budgets up to 7%. You know, w w with the size of the budget they have, they probably could have done that. Uh, but they didn't. I mean, they said, this is what we think we're going to do, 3.5%. Uh, and, and, uh, and again, if you look at the last 10 years, it's been up and down. And most parents have been complaining they're taken out of the regular education to fund the special education. So, uh, uh, like I said, I think they could have been more articulate and clear in their verbal presentations, but all the numbers are there. So, um, budget is now before you. Um, I'm trying to remember now from a long time ago whether there was a motion made to pass. So moved. Yeah. Okay, so a motion's been made and seconded. I made a motion to raise the budget by a million dollars. 
Okay, motion's been made. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, approve the budget or approve the appropriation of 53-574-114. Is there any further motions? I made a motion to reduce that budget by a million dollars. Okay. So is there a second to that? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay, so um, we'll take the motion first uh, to reduce the school budget by $1 million. Is there any discussion on that, Grant? I'd like to make an, uh, yet another motion. Okay, uh, Okay. go ahead. No action until the school committee comes back in. And I know it didn't interfere with the timing, but I want to make the motion. Well, that's what happens if you vote against the budget in general. They're going to come you back and vote against it. Okay. His, um, his, his isn't quite as harsh, I think. <laughs> so are you making a motion to table the budget? I guess that's Until the school committee comes back next Monday. Okay, is there a second to that motion? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, so let's take that first. Um, if that passes, the budget's tabled, and uh, we'll invite them back next Monday. Okay, so all in favor of tabling the budget until we ask the school committee to come back next Monday, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so that one, that fails. One abstention, please. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, okay. You gotta raise your hand when I ask for it. Two abstain. Two abstain. Two abstain. Okay. Now the next motion is to reduce the school budget by one million dollars. All those in favor of doing that, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Send them, send them <laughs> five again. All opposed. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Abstain. One, two, three. Okay, so that motion fails. Now we're back to the original motion of the 53 514 114. All those in favor of that motion, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. <laughs> got to play these numbers. Come on, get, do something besides five. Okay. All opposed, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four. And abstain. One. Okay. The motion uh, carries 13 to four with one abstention uh, for, for that amount of money. Alan, just a question. In, in not to do with the budget, but I mean, there's there, there still are questions. Would the subcommittee prefer that we send questions through them, or should we send it directly to the schools? Okay, I, so, I, you know, questions. In other words, questions from the presentation. Exactly. Okay, I would say it should go through Dick. Okay, I would recommend that, or or well, Dick will share it with the rest of his subcommittee. So, if if you have any specific questions, uh, like Charlie, you asked for the last 10-year plan. Did you get anything? No. I didn't see it. Okay. Um, so, Dick, uh, we'd like to get the 10 years, full 10 years uh, of special education costs. It's pending, right? Of special education, right. Uh, we'd like to get that upgraded because, like uh, Charlie said, last year we got it. This year we, we didn't. Um, any specific things? Uh, go through it. We'll try to get the information. And I'm sure there'll be some discussion at town meeting. Okay, uh, Minuteman's done. Insurance. Insurance. Bill? Uh, yes, so a couple of days ago, I circulated a um, revised group health insurance budget to replace page 165 in the budget book. And um, I brought up the copies if you don't have that tonight. Um, please help me out and I'll get these around to you.
Now, Bill, were you talking about the one you handed out the other night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. I, uh, I didn't know if everybody would bring it back tonight, so. Okay. Like that. Have I got it. I'm all I apologize for the very uh, small fonts. I tried uh, in vain to uh, make this a little larger with this uh, PDF email thing. So, uh, so our, our subcommittee met with uh, Karen Cove Malloy and uh, wanted to um, just highlight a few things. To begin with, there were some name changes on the uh, some of the line items. <coughs> For example, line 5700 on the original sheet was uh, health insurance ref uh, interest. And the new name is Medicare penalty. Okay. And down on line 5706, um, the old name was indemnification, and this is now the Medicare payroll tax. So the first issue I want to talk a little bit about is um, the opt-out clause in this uh, budget proposal, line 5703. And basically, uh, any employee, if an employee of an older plan or even one in the GIC, let's say Harvard Pilgrim or Blue Cross Blue Shield, or maybe they're in their spouse's plan, <coughs> um, but they already have coverage. It's actually cheaper to give them $2,000 a year rather than pay the employee share of the health insurance through the town. And these plans tend to run between ten dollars to $12,000 per year per, uh, per plan. So the town actually has a significant savings with this opt-out program. And uh, one of the calculations came out to be about three quarters of a million dollars per year. So one thing that I have here uh, is about a 25 page document that we had at our perusal when we met uh, with the uh, human resource manager. If anybody would like the fine print, uh, I'd be very happy to send the PDF to you and you can and see the uh, where we got some of our results from. Okay, Bill, you said the savings from the opt-out were approximately 750000 Correct. Is, is that a gross or a net? In other words, do you have to subtract the two forty-five from the seven fifty for a net savings of five, or is the seven fifty a net savings? I think net savings. Net savings. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the next line item, uh, 5704, is actually the GIC itself, the group health. Uh, the request this year was for $14,472,394. And uh, basically this includes current enrollment plus the uh, uh, fiscal year 2016 rate changes given to us uh, by the different carriers. So there's actually 14 different plans that are involved. Uh, some of these uh, plans went up in rates, some of the plans went down in rate. But on average, um, there was an increase. The other factor that uh, resulted in an increase were anticipated new contracts. And uh, there are roughly uh, 10 individual contracts and 10 family contracts that are projected to come into being in the next year. Uh, added to that, uh, we talked a little bit, well, quite a bit about education. There are significant increases in the uh, student uh, population, especially in uh, kindergarten and one through one through six, grades one through six, and uh, they're projecting 20 teachers to be hired. So uh, that figure worked out to be about a 6.61% increase if you just did an enrollment snapshot. Uh, a year ago, the same figure was a 6.9% increase. Uh, so many of these increases are based on uh, increases in premiums. Uh, line 5709, the flexible benefit plan, uh, 52,448. Last year was actually 7,000, and the reason for this big uh, uh, 
differentiation is the reason is, is that um, the 45000 was an HRA administration fee uh, previously charged to the GIC, and now they have their, their own line item. Okay? <coughs> Talk a little bit about the group uh, life insurance, line 5705. Uh, one thing that's a little, uh, little bit unique is that every town employee has coverage for life. Uh, There's a $5,000 term life policy on every employee, uh, even after they retire. And um, these rates actually went up 20% this year. And coupling that with more retirees passing on, and the town itself actually has an older workforce force per se, so we anticipate more payouts in the coming years. Line 5700, the Medicare penalty of 18,000, uh, no change. Basically, we keep employees on after age 65, and all employees, you know, must go on to Medicare beginning with age 65 and the penalty must be paid if uh, that's not the case. Uh, at the top, uh, line 5190, talk a little bit about the offset, the enterprise funds. Um, uh, this particular line was up 19,419. Again, it's revenue in being an offset. And this was <coughs> charged to the Ed Burns Arena and uh, water and sewer department. So again, the total is based on current enrollment and uh, projections and rate increases. So uh, I'm good with that. I, if there are any questions, well, we can go ahead and put this up for a vote. OK, Alan. Uh, have the GIC rates been fixed? Are they? They have. Certainly. That's why we have the, yeah. the new sheet tonight. But, yeah. John? Sir, the Medicare penalty, is that something that's in, in a community contract or something that people don't go on Medicare when they could? You know? Is that why that happens? Uh, yeah, the question is, is can you weigh in on that, uh, I just Carolyn? Had a question. Why, why is it that we have to, the basic question is, why is the, we are paying a Medicare penalty? Is that because people decide they want to stay on our insurance or, or because it's a unit yeah, contract that says so? Anybody that doesn't get Medicare within three months of age 65 and they've elected that it's all, all this is negotiated with the unions. Okay. And basically, they're, That's they the were question. so happy to get everybody on the GIC. Uh, it, it showed up this year on this line. Uh, last year it showed up on a different, in a different line. So that's why the uh, 52445 <coughs> that figure is comprised of a $45,000 administration fee imposed by the HRA. Okay? And then the $7,000 uh, difference is basically uh, payroll deductions, uh, setup fees, setup plans, administration, administrative fees associated with that line. That's, a, that's for the cafeteria plan, the Section 125 cafeteria plan for the employees. Yep. Okay. Are there any other questions? <laughs> okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Uh, so your recommendation is, now are you, uh, have you gone through the others or we'll do those next? I'll oh, do those next. So okay. this, is, this recommendation is just for the group health insurance. The 2016 request is 15,364,582. million. Yes. Fifteen million. Yes. If only. Fifteen million. Okay, any other, any other discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the 15364582 for uh, group health insurance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Okay, so if you just flip the page to um, 166, please, the liability insurance. 
This is this, uh, pretty straightforward this year. Unlike um, health, group health and life, uh, the rates were fairly uh, stable, at least for uh, this year. You can see the last three years on several of the different lines, the uh, budget amounts were the same. Um, one thing I want to point out, the property insurance previously, <coughs> previously was called indemnity. It's now property insurance premiums. And um, these have been fixed for three years at uh, 270625 and uh, that's expected to increase next year when it begins a new three-year cycle. So, there's uh, quite a bit of di discussion and dialogue on line 5245 on workman's comp. Uh, much of it is claims, anticipated claims, there are claims that were made by employees that the town went after that they didn't think they were legitimate. Um, so it's about a three-page um, three uh, response to um, that particular article, that particular line. So, any questions? And I've seen some numbers. They really beat them down <laughs> on the bills when they get in this category. Yeah. Okay, are there any other, are there any questions? Okay, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, for 995. Uh, uh, motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Unanimous. Okay, thank you, Bill. That's it. You're welcome. Can be a complex budget, almost as complex as the next one. <laughs> <laughs> not, not complex at all. Water and sewer. Water and sewer. 175. Well, there's some, some handouts here. You have to pass them around. This should go quick because it's relatively straightforward this year. Okay, three things I'm passing around, or well, two things I'm passing around. I guess that's the third thing in the budget package. Uh, one is a memo from uh, uh, Deputy Town Manager about how offsets are produced, which I'm hoping will answer any and all questions about offsets. That's good. Prepared to do the math. Uh, that's why he has the memo. And uh, another is just to hand out about the presentation, just to follow along. like this. Yep. Everyone mm -hmm. has a uh, memo and everyone yep. has the budget revisions that Glory handed out. So let's start on the update. Uh, three sections. First we try to address unaccounted water, then we talk about the water rates and usage, and then we'll get to the budget stuff, exciting stuff. So if you look at section one, it's the unaccounted water. Uh, some interesting stuff that we came across that I thought we'd uh, you know, get out in the open before we talk about the budgets. And uh, leaks is the largest reason for unaccounted water. Uh, we do an annual survey every year 
uh, to identify the leaks that uh, we don't see. And uh, the leak repair strategy is pretty much, uh, you know, if it's a big leak, it gets fixed first, because that's the biggest impact. The next largest factor in the leaks is uh, older meters. And uh, there's a meter replacement program, mostly residential, to replace all the older meters. Because what's happening with the older meters is that they uh, could very well be undercounting the actual water used. Interesting process, you know, if things get corroded, it doesn't turn as fast as how it was explained to us. Uh, the third component to unaccounted water, which is actually pretty much should be a constant, and that's the annual hydrant flushing. Every year they flush hydrants out, and no way of measuring that. Uh, one of the things that we uh, asked about is, uh, well, how do we see, uh, any pr how could we measure any, any of this progress that we're making with our water and sewer mains and the replacement. And uh, Mike believes that uh, one of the ways to measure the progress is that uh, is measured by the MWRA assessment. Uh, it's not going up as much as, you know, relatively speaking, as much as the other towns. While our billable water usage has actually increased. That's an interesting little parlay there. We're using more billable water, but relative to other towns, our assessment is less. So some other, other little quick notes that I thought people might find interesting, that I found interesting, is that we do, in fact, public, uh, public buildings are meeting for water usage. Even my favorite public usage, the Thompson Spray Park. <laughs> <laughs> that is unique to Arlington. There's nothing like that anywhere else. <laughs> also found the town sewage, the total sewage, is also metered by the MWRA. So it's a one, you know, ways that we can measure how much uh, output, let's say, uh, uh, is being being accounted for. So that's the unaccounted water. Uh, anyone have any questions on uh, the unaccounted water part? Uh, next interesting thing that we found out was about the section two, which is the water rates and the usage. So we uh, found out that uh, conservation is, uh, well, let's say not the end thing. Uh, it has been a 15, 20% increase. Actually, I had 10 to 15. I took lens 15 to 20, because I think he takes better notes. <laughs> um, the increase in billable water usage. So we're actually using more water, more Why? billable water. Was there any reason given? Yeah, Mike's reason um, given school. was <laughs> what's <that? laughs> the spray pack. <laughs> yeah, I asked about that too because I, 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 I hate that someone to say we use too much water, we have to cut that out because I think that's great. No, that's actually been improved too, like let's say. Yeah, using a lot less than theory day. Yeah. Um, but Mike says it's attributed to the economy doing better. And uh, overall, that's, that sounds right with me too. Uh, interesting because other towns, we're not. We are using more water than other towns, relatively so. Is this volume or bills? Volume. Oh. Volume. Like kind of the sort of, what do you mean? So this is, there's cash. cash. Bill is the bills yeah. no. Yeah. Versus. No. 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 Volume. 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 Yeah. But the Sims and Brigham developments, that would account for a significant amount. Yeah, he was going to check on that. He hadn't had a look at that. Yeah, we weren't, yeah, we weren't sure how much. It, he, that, that's a possibility, but it's also, you know, while other towns didn't have sins and brigands, and they're using less water, you know, so, okay, but, so, we're going to wait another year to see if the trend holds, but in, a, in the, the consultant's report a couple of years ago, a Woodcock study, I think it was, they recommended the raising of rates, mm -hmm. and uh, partly because as we conserve, we have to charge more because we're using less. So it's one of those little paradox relationships. Yeah. But we didn't conserve, we use more. So consequently, Mike doesn't see any reason to raise the rates because that was originally suggested as a, as a measure to compensate for lost revenue when in fact our revenue went up. So he wants to, doesn't see the reason to, to raise the rates. I think that's I, perhaps good news. Well, in some ways it's good news. So 
part of it could be the Sims Brigham. Yeah, it's hard to attribute what the what the difference is. Be interesting to know if our town buildings and school buildings are using more or less. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But not billable. Okay. No, but, it, no, but that's true. Easy. That would be under that range. But it would still, you know, it's it's for every amount that goes through the school or town, uh, we're not getting any money for it in the enterprise fund. Right, that's one of the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something else might go too with all the new construction, including the Sims and the Brighams, is that all the stuff going in is all you know efficiency related. It's actually using less water. You know, a new house will use less water than an old house. So that's another another driving factor. So um, using a lot of water or building a lot of water. You know. So again, a good thing. I know someone's going to pick up on the public building, so I mentioned that their meter. <laughs> All right, so uh, moving along, articles and budgets. So the good news is we've already talked about articles 26 and 27. The only comment I wanted to make on that, um, you know, it's slow going on the sewer replacement that uh, Mike had mentioned. Uh, we got about 120 miles of sewer pipe and we replace the repair about a mile of it. Mm. Uh, it's going to be tough to keep up with that, but yeah. 120 years. Uh, so, okay, so uh, without any uh, further delay, let's move on to the, the budgets. Uh, they start at the... Uh, let's see what page is it? That means. So was the change from your new sheets to your old sheets? And by the way, I want to compliment you because when you printed them out, you could actually read the bottom lines in the shaded areas. I, I printed it in a photocopy. Oh, okay. Technology. Uh, but is that the basic change between the uh, the ones that we got originally? Is the health insurance? Yes, the only change is the health insurance. It appears in two places under sewer and underwater. Okay. Yeah, essentially that's it. There's a couple of other little. Those are the only changes or revisions to the budget is printed, and it's a pretty level funded budget, separated the operating and debt. And um, I think there's a reclass position, a GIS coordinator, uh, funding is reduced, and there's really no other big surprises in here. I think um, in terms of the big barriers, other than the. Uh, now we also we asked uh, about the uh, enterprise fund retained earnings goal guideline because we had um, wondered about the usage about whether we're trying to build up that fund or reduce that fund and uh, kind of similar to some other uh, reserve funds. And uh, his goal of guideline is approximately 30% of budget, not there, but. Okay, so what what is the surplus at the end of fiscal 15, uh, 14, the last fiscal year? Was uh, that? So on paper it was more, but in reality, because things have been encumbered and not spent, it's about, it was about 2.5 million. I'm sorry? Uh, about 2.5 million for the okay. actual state in reality. It was a little bit less than that. So that would be his adjusted, adjusted balance was 2.5. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Well, I guess we could review them if there's any questions about the line items, but I would uh, recommend that we vote to approve. I will go, I'll walk through each budget, but I'm going to recommend to vote to approve the budget as uh, revised for the health benefits. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Do you want to say anything, uh, anything pop up at you about the uh, water and sewer offsets? No, I mean the... Observations? The, yeah, I mean, <coughs> so it was a study done by Powers and Sullivan several years ago that started that uh, set the rate. There's been a lot of restructuring within town divisions since then. We switched to quarterly billing, which was a big, a big change. Um, and they sort of made those changes on the fly. So um, 
especially with the creation of the facilities department. He's, Andrew has agreed to bring Gary <coughs> Sullivan back next year to do another study to make sure that the, the reimbursement rates are correct or, or are re, are re um, reevaluated and, and new ones are created. I noticed the treasurer collector's budget was offset was up substantially, but I figure that's because, that was because of the, of the we switched, quarterly we switched last year with the quarterly. Yeah, the yeah. second page of the thing has explanation Okay. Uh, now, do you want to go budget by budget? Yeah, I might do the uh, so Okay, so sewer. Sewer sewer collection systems. I recommend that we uh, approve the budget for Six thirty-seven thousand two hundred thirty-four. Second. Okay. Now these are the. Uh, not, this is the debt service that goes through the capital budget yeah. to pay off the bonds. Basically, there is no total here. Okay, so the rec oh, yeah. motion's made and seconded for six thirty-seven two thirty-four. That's a subtotal. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I got five twenty-two. Yeah, neither the original budget nor the revised budget have the total. Oh, okay. In that line, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Oh, you're right. <laughs> Somebody have that a calculator? Magic printer, right. <laughs> it's like out of guys and dolls. We took the numbers off the dice, right? <laughs> <laughs> Glad people understand the reference. I think it was a calculator could add up the... Um, I think the gentleman to my right is working visibly yeah. on it. Which, which, uh, which line? To be able to read the numbers. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Um, the town doesn't pay for the water that it uses, which should be part of the tax base. In my mind, it should be a, a part of the property tax one, base. The usage of that one, one, two, is putting one, it five, on seven. the water and sewer bills, which are unrelated to the property one, tax. One twenty-five zero zero zero. Is that an issue? So I, I, I potentially see this an issue because the town, should, the town's getting resource, but the water and sewer bills paying for it, which is a, you know, it's an enterprise fund. It's you know, theoretical. And there's a I mean, it's sort of being billed to everybody else. So, you know, the average taxpayer is, is picking up the water and sewer. Well, I want, I, want my tax bill. I want on my tax bill so I can pay for it. Some of it is. It's not on my tax bill. It's, it's, well, that's, it's on my water bill, which is not deductible. Right. But it would only go that way if, you, if it was based on the value of your home. Well, I understand. I understand. I'm, not, I'm not going to value the home. I'm saying it should be in the town budget, not in the water and sewer. Just something to think about. Okay, do we have a number? Uh, 10,399,714. I got 10,402. One more number? That was just the... This Come on, guys. Back to TV. What's happening? This cracker jack finance committee. 226. Uh, storm sewer. That's yeah, I, oh, I put the storm sewer. Okay, I'll back that out. That's why I get two. I got 10, 4, 2, 8, 1, 6. Yeah. All these people can't have two. Uh, I apologize. We should have noticed that it wasn't there. None of the, there's only one of the budgets that does have it there. Uh, well, I have 10 million four zero two eight one six. Yeah. Okay. Close enough for government work. Okay. <laughs> Ten million four zero two eight one six. We have to get back down and make sure it's right. Well, just when I was complimenting you on the, how you could read the uh, <laughs> shape. <laughs> so I wanted them transparent. I guess we're transparent. I don't know. <laughs> the totals are great. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the motion has been made and seconded for ten million four zero two eight sixteen. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Favorable action, unanimous. So we have an easy one on storm sewer collection system, because they have the total printed in there. 226,000. Yes. Second. Okay. Any questions on storm sewer collection system? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous?
Okay, water distribution system. Okay, well, that's 225177. So, hot off the press, uh, <coughs> our calculator uh, came up with that. I would like to recommend that uh, a total budget to approve the amount of uh, 7 million. Two hundred twenty-five thousand one hundred seventy-seven. Okay, seven million two two five one seven seven. Anybody else? Second. Anybody else come up with that number? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Motions were made and seconded on the water distribution system. Seven million two two five one seven seven. Any, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Uh. And uh, so the, <clears throat> the next budget is, <laughs> is the water sewer properties. And uh, <clears throat> we the total at the hot off the press on this one, thanks for your patience, 1,924,000. 382. 1,924,382. Okay, and that's the... Okay, so the first was the collection, then storms, then water distribution, and then properties. Okay, so uh, 1,924,382, motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Is there any questions? I have one. Um, the salary of people 22, is that a half-time person? Is that a, a lot of longevity? Is that a salary and wages? That was the reclass in water and sewer property. The reclass? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, the wasn't that much. Okay, is there any other questions or discussion? Okay, motions made and seconded for 1,924,382. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, and the bottom is just a summary. It's Okay, so you had a balance at the end of fiscal 14 of approximately 2.5 million. Uh, and looking to produce a small surplus this time. Uh, now, is, we got one more here. Grant, is this? The next one's water sewer enterprise. This is the um, revenues. Yeah, revenue tracking. The um, yeah. This is, so uh, I want to uh, I guess approve the uh, uh, total water sewer revenue received. This is all you know the billable stuff. Uh, Nineteen million eight six eight four four nine. Second. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, that's that's another tough one. And thank you for getting this memo on the uh, offsets. I uh, hope everybody reads it, just gets a, a good sense of it, because, uh, you know, you, you, you go with this a year later, so right. it should be something that we always keep for next year, right? If Powers and Sullivan comes in to have a dog and pony show, could we actually have a meeting and have them come talk to us? Because I think that I'd be very interested to find out about all that. I know I can go to the uh, selections meeting, yeah, but I'm just saying it's a good bench that all of us have when they come in and do an adjustment for this. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Start again. I heard that Powers and Sullivan is going to do oh, a oh. new review of yeah. this. When they do that, 
this committee should be, I think, included in that Dodge and Pony show, so because it does affect everything that's flowing through. I mean, just whenever it happens. It could be a year from now, it could be two years from now. Okay. Uh, please keep it on your to-do list. And uh, you could even actually talk to Andrew uh, and, and see if, you, if they can let us know when it's happening and those people who are, uh, are interested in it can have their two cents. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think that does it. Now, a couple of things. We had a long discussion on the, uh, on the school budget. Obviously, uh, a significant minority are not happy with the way it was done, or I guess with the responses to it. Uh, Dick will put together a list of items uh, you know, to present to the superintendent uh, to try to get more information. You know, uh, you know, our learning process has not stopped. Um, God knows we've been doing with Minuteman for years. Um, so please don't, you know, make a note to yourself tonight. This is the issue that I really have. Uh, John mentioned, for example, AYCC. How much is that being done? Uh, uh, the, obviously, the special ed. Dick can get the 10-year uh, up to date, um, and then. Uh, but go home, think of the questions you want to ask, get to Dick so he can go once with one list of questions, uh, and we'll get them back. We're going to be meeting not only on uh, the uh, 13th of April, but we'll be meeting the half hour before each session, and we can discuss this and, uh, <coughs> you know, and have them come back. Um, so, you know, I tend to do it myself. Don't let the, don't let the issues go. Dean? Before we go, can I make one quick sure. question? So I'll explain it first. I know this is for you. I usually ask that we grant the authority for Al and Al to fix the clerical errors in the budget without having to come back to us. Technically, under the law, if they find a ten dollar balancing error in an enterprise fund or something, they have to come back to us and revote it. And it's really, really silly when we have to do that. So I move that we grant the chair and vice chair the authority to fix all clerical errors when they, that they come across when putting the book together. And I'll second. 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 Okay. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, on April 13th, 7.30 here, uh, we got the collective bargaining, if, he's, if he has hopefully some. If not, we'll have to appropriate the money into that article for use at some other point. We have the Human Rights uh, Commission, hopefully the selectmen are voting next Monday, uh, to appoint. Uh, the Human Rights Commission has endorsed the proposal to have Christine appointed as the Human Rights Director. Uh, we'll have the Fiscal Stability Fund to balance that out uh, and any other fine tuning. So again, I'll be sending out the Finance Committee report to everybody here along with John Leone and the J Doug Himes and the manager for comments to get back. Alan's going to be sending out all of the budgets. Please go over them in detail. Make sure. And one of the always things that gets messed up, you know, like in police is how many people there were across uh, just because we're shifting over a year and you got to make sure those line up correctly. Um, is there any other business before the uh, Finance Committee? Paul? Um, does the House Ways and Means budget come out before April 13th? No, 15th. Okay. Remember you, you, you gave me the uh, permission to adjust the, fi the fiscal stability fund for any ups or downs that comes out on the 15th. I, and, and again, I'm going to try to, I'd like to have all comments back to Alan and to me, uh, say by the, uh, I don't know, April uh, 7th or 8th, you know, so say a week. Uh, if you could go through that. Um, go to press on and the then I think, I don't think that, well, Charlie, you're, you're working on the uh, capital budget. Um, get that to Gloria. And uh, I think we're all set. Any other business? Nope. Thank you all very much for your work. It's. Uh, very effective. Thank you.